Chief Woody, can you tell us a little bit about what's happened over the last week in, in terms of the operation you your agents have been mounting? Quite a bit for U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for law enforcement. In the last week, we've had approximately 150 officers involving several federal agencies, our agents, and refuge officers involved in a takedown that we refer to as Operation Crash. An Operation Crash dealt with the illegal trafficking in rhino horns throughout the United States. Can you tell me why there's a market for rhino horns? Price. Really, the price right now, what we have back, what we've, this operation's been going on for pro the last year. Mm -hmm. And what we have is, you know, based on some information that we've gotten back, prices for rhino horn, for a pound of rhino horn in Asia, one pound, is $25,000. And I would have to say from talking with the folks, 25, that, that, is, the, that is the sole driving force on the market for rhino horns. Mm -hmm. And Dan, can you kind of put this in a larger context? Why, what, what, are, the, what are the implications for rhinos in the wild of this, this trade and, and the illegal trafficking in rhino horns? Yeah, I think the thing to bear in mind is this is really all about rhino conservation. So a lot of times we tend to think about law enforcement as kind of a separate piece of what we do and it's about getting the bad guys, certainly. Um, and it, it's about enforcing the law, but it's really about conservation of the rhino. And um, I learned something in the last week. They're, they're calling it Operation Crash because a, a group of rhinos is called a crash. And so I think that what uh, this is all part of, I think, uh, uh, being relevant to the American people. I think they, they, uh, people care about wildlife. They certainly care about wildlife like uh, like rhinos and this is what we've got and what we're dealing with yeah black rhinos white rhinos are the two that are coming through that we're seeing coming through the United States and generally what we have is we have them they come like this they also come in mounts and you have to remember one thing about it under the Endangered Species Act you cannot traffic in these things yeah I think what it gets down to we see, we see we hear this a lot in the in the environment of uh, enforcing uh, our CITES and other international laws is well you know it's a polar bear pelt well it's a dead bear so why can't we trade in it or it's a it's an elephant tusk oh it's a it's a dead elephant so well, you know why, why isn't it okay to trade that well it's not okay to trade it because that makes enforcement all the more complicated to have those products moving around in, in trade. And so I think what's important is if we want to conserve uh, rhino um, and if we believe that trade is the driving factor in conservation of the rhino, then we need to stop trade. And I'm sure part of this needs to be as well educating people about uh, rhino horns and, and the fact that their medicinal properties are, are not exactly what they're touted to be. Right, I think the um, a large part of the trade driven by traditional medicines and use of rhino horn in traditional medicines and I think education is an important part of that just like we've done with tiger and the use of tiger bone and other parts of, of tigers in traditional medicines. So education has to be an important part of our conservation effort too. So what, what is a rhino horn made of, actually? It's made of keratin, like your fingernails, is essentially what it is. So, you know, if you look close, you can see it. It's really just a, a hair, and you can feel it down along here, and you can just feel the hair. That's essentially what it is. If you can get a shot on there, that's all it is. So really what we're talking about is the equivalent of, of fingernails. That is correct. I think the first thing to bear in mind is that rhinos are now among the most endangered uh, animals in the world. Um, we think about a population that once exceeded a million animals in Africa and now we're down to less than 20,000 white rhinos, uh, about 4,000 black rhinos, less than 200 Sumatran uh, rhinos. So we're looking at a, at a, a pop across the population, an extremely endangered animal. Are you concerned about rhinos disappearing from the wild entirely? I think we are. I think we're seeing uh, declines in these populations. I mean, we have 
good news, we've had good news um, in the last several decades for white rhinos, particularly because of the, of the exceptional management that's been happening in South Africa. Um, but continuing bad news for black rhino and Sumatran rhino, and recently even white rhinos are declining uh, now because of this escalation in, in trade and, and poaching. So I think significant concern that within our lifetimes we could potentially see extirpation of some of these animals in the wild. And last year in South Africa there were approximately 450 rhinos poached in the wild on the ground that they found. So 450, you know, and you're talking less than 24,000 animals and it's going up. If you look at that two years ago it was lower than that and we hope it doesn't go up but we hope this particular case puts a dent in that over there as well too. And this is despite the service's efforts to fund anti-poaching efforts and to, tra and to combat illegal trafficking. Work closely with them over there. I know we have the agents go over every year and set up classes, work with South Africa and some of the other governments over there, but we will continue to work with them closely and any assistance we can give to them, we'll do it.